Okay, so uh, I'm Shotaro Sano from Prefound Networks, and today I'm happy to introduce our new hyperparameter optimization library called Optuner. And in this presentation, I will describe the basic usage of Optuner, as well as will describe the uh, design philosophy of the library. I think a lot of people here have some experience to be bothered by hyperparameters. In many cases, the optimization is conducted manually, where people just repeat coming up with hyperparameter and they vary the parameter, and just repeat this cycle uh, for every few hours or even days, which robs a lot of time and creativity from humans. And Optuna automate this process. If you are already familiar with hyperparameter optimization, you may know some other existing libraries like Hyperopt, SMAC, or Google Vizier. So why you should use Optuna among those libraries? Because Optuna is intuitive, efficient, and versatile. So let me describe those criteria. Speaking of intuitive and easy to use, so there are actually several points to be discussed here. But let me show you an actual example where I will compare Optuna to other libraries. So let's think a common problem in a neural network where we want to optimize the number of layers as well as the number of units for each layer. So before describing, des describing the power of Optuna, let's take a look at how other optimization library deals with this problem. You may know Hyperopt, which is one of most famous library uh, for hyperparameter optimization. So let's see what is going to happen if we use Hyperopt for this problem. That's like this, quite long and nested. So we wanted to solve very simple optimization problem. However, you need quite complicated setup to do that. The problem here is you need such space definition. And the such spaces actually have, uh, it has nested structure. That is, the number of units for each layer is actually a conditional variable of the number of layers. And it's actually very hard to describe such kind of nested um, structure in existing library. So that's the reason why you use Optuna. So I will describe how Optuna deals with this problem, starting from the basic usage of Optuna. You can install the library with pip install Optuna. And there are very few dependencies, so you can immediately um, install Optuna with this command. And you can use Optuna with any kind of machine learning libraries, including TensorFlow or Scikit-Lam. And indeed, it, it is applicable for any kind of black box optimization. So let's see a Hello World example with a very simple black box optimization. So here, we have a quadratic function and we want to minimize this using Optuna. So you have the function like this. And here the hyperparameter is x, and we want to optimize x so that the return from the objective value is minimized. And this type of objective, uh, th this function is called objective function. And let's see. So, in Optuna, objective function is uh, supposed to get trial object. And this trial object suggests which hyperparameter should be tried next. And you also should, speci uh, should specify the range of hyperparameter. And just like this, you can define the objective function. And to run the optimization, use what is called study object, which manages the optimization process. And invoke study.optimize, 
passing the objective function you defined. And here, let's output the uh, optimization result for the best parameter. So that is the script you need to write. And after writing this, just run the script. And you can see the optimization result like this. And at the bottom line, you can see the uh, best result, best parameter for the, for the problem. Um, among 100 trials. So just like this, you can use Optuna just like you use, you write usual Python script. And this is a, a visualization for the optimization process uh, where the horizontal axis is trial count and the vertical one is objective value. At first, Optuna broadly explores uh, uh, such space and gradually it converges near the optimal point. So in summary of basic usage, to use Optuna, define the objective function and get parameter suggestion with suggest method and run the search with study.optimize. So let's go back to the original problem where we wanted to optimize the number of layers as well as the number of units for each layer. So let's see how Optuna deals with this problem. So this is the machine learning logic without hyperparameter optimization. So currently it just um, you know, runs a training for multi-layer perceptron uh, for MNIST dataset. And I will modify this to apply Optuna. So basically, uh, what you need to do is just surround the machine learning logic with objective function. And here you want to optimize layers. So first, get the suggestion for number of layers. And after that, run a for loop for the number of layers. And just get a uh, number of units for each layer in the for loop. So basically you can just, you know, deal with nested such space problem, just like this. And objective function is defined, so you can run the optimization just by invoking study.optimize. So that's all. And so left is existing framework, and right is Optuna. So using Optuna, you can reduce the amount of your code, and you can intuitively write down the search space, and you can easily access to the nested search space. The magic behind this is what is called imperative interface. Imperative interface is inspired by modern deep learning libraries such as TensorFlow, Eager Mode, PyTorch, or Chainer. The, the interface allows you to use the full extent of the host language. That means you can directly use Python syntax to configure the optimization. So let's see the example again. In, in Optuna, the search space definition happens during the optimization. And you define the such space with Python syntax. On the other hand, in existing libraries, you need to define the search space before the optimization, outside the objective function. And um, you also need to use the library's own syntax to define the search space. That actually makes it very hard to describe the nested search space. So by the way, Optuna uh, provides very easy mechanism to distribute the optimization. So if you have multiple nodes, you can just run the optimization you know, in multiple nodes. And it can be asynchronous, and it, can, it shows near linear scalability. 
And to distribute the optimization, all you need is to share two pieces of information. One is the URL of the central database, and you also need to share the uh, name of the experiment. And just sharing those two information among workers, you can, so you, you just need to run the uh, script from multiple nodes or processes. And just by doing this, uh, workers automatically share the history of optimization and run distributed optimization based on the history. So next, let me uh, talk, our, talk about our algorithm. So this is an overview of Optuner's optimization algorithm. And there are two components of sampling strategy and pruning strategy. The sampling strategy is how to decide the next configuration uh, with previous such history. So this is, uh, you know, exactly corresponding to uh, black box optimization. So it's like, you know, grid search or random search or Bayesian optimization. And pruning strategy is, it's just like, you know, by looking at intermediate curve of the intermediate learning curve of the trial, we can detect unpromising trial in the mid of the optimization. So pruning is early stopping of the um, underperforming trials. So let's see our sampling algorithm. Optuna provides uh, multiple uh, sampling algorithms, and you can easily switch the backend algo uh, just changing one line of your code. And you can also define your own sampling algorithm. And among them, we found that uh, combining two different types of basic method, uh, it shows outstanding performance. So that is, we combined what is called three person estimator, which is a variant of Bayesian optimization, and combined it with what is called CMAES. This is genetic algorithm. So just by combining this, it shows a state of the art performance on a black box benchmark called SIGOPT benchmark. And it outperformed HyperOpt, GPIOpt, and SMAC, uh, which are very famous black box optimization framework. And next, let me describe our pruning algorithm. Uh, pruning automatically stops unpromising trials. And so it, it is by looking at intermediate learning curve. And for pruning as well, uh, Optuna provides multi multiple uh, methods and uh, you can easily write your own logic as well. And above them, what is called successive halving showed an um, outstanding performance. I will skip the detail of successive halving, but it's basically you know, based on multi-armed bandit. So the re result is, by using successive halving, it makes your optimization twice as fast. So just by turning this feature, you can make your optimization much, much faster. So finally, let me uh, describe our versatile architecture. Here's the motivation is, hyperparameter optimization lies in variety of scenarios. For example, uh, in some use cases, uh, you just want to run your optimization on your local laptop or notebook for just you know, experimental purpose. And in some use case, you want to deploy it on your production, which probably have much more solid and complicated pipelines and infrastructure. And sometimes we want to distribute the optimization to dozens or hundreds of workers. And our motivation is to cover all of those scenarios just with one library of Optune. And to Deal with this, we came up three requirements of lightweight, scalable, and visualizable. Lightweight means, um, you know, uh, 
the minimum dependencies, both in terms of infrastructure and software. And in terms of software, Optuna just have a few requirements, few Python dependency. Uh, it just have SQL Alchemy and some side-by-stack libraries. And for infrastructure perspective as well, um, so Optuna basically is just a standalone single Python process. So it has almost, it has almost no infrastructure dependency. So this is actually a totally different approach from some uh, recent frameworks like Google Vizier or Kubeflow. So they are provided as API services or you know, set of pods and based on much bigger infrastructure like Kubernetes. And we just thought uh, those kind of architecture is good, but you know, it's over engineering in many cases. So just select it to be a standalone process for the library to deal with various scenarios. And of course you can deploy it on you know, Kubernetes work workload or some workflow engine. And this is a, a system flow of Optuna to deal with distributed optimization. Um, so the point is, during distributed optimization, all communication among workers happen in a storage, only in storage. And the second point is users can change the backend database according to their need. Uh, like they can use server-based RDB or SQLite for much more lightweight purpose. And by default, it's just an in-memory database to, um, you know, deal with, uh, to, to be a standalone process. I think the architecture is very simple, but especially because it's simple, uh, it realizes minimum, minimum infrastructure dependency and realizes scalable optimization at the same time. And speaking of visualization, uh, you can uh, export uh, the trial history to Pandas data frame. And as you know, Pandas is very powerful uh, library for visualization and analysis. And another way to visualize is uh, we uh, provide dashboard that consolidates typical analysis scenarios like parallel coordinates. In summary, Optuna is intuitive, efficient, and versatile. Intuitive because of its imperative interface and efficient because of both pruning and sampling algorithms and versatile because of the architecture to you know, realize lightweight, scalable, and visualizable design. So finally, uh, Optuna is an um, open, active open source software. So please go to PFNet Optuna, and we are looking forward to any feedback to realize efficient and user-friendly AutoML ecosystem. That's all of my presentation. Thank you for listening.日本語で質問します。オプチュナを使ってあの最適化パラメータをそのパイソンのシンタックスに埋め込んであの書けるということをご紹介いただいたと思うんですけれど、その最適化した結果を使うときってあのシンタックスにえっとオプチュナで最適